The band Muse are well known for combining classical music and rock music. In fact, it's this combination of old and new which gives the band their signature sound. Classical composers, particularly those from the Romantic period, have always been a big influence on Muse. Uh, the influence is mainly sort of, um, sort of classical music f from Europe, like more so like French, like Chopin or Berlioz, and Russian like Rachmaninoff, um, combined with modern rock from America, like Rage Against the Machine, well, like Rage Against the Machine, uh, Smashing Pumpkins, that sort of thing. Sort of like influenced by those two elements, I think. As discussed in that clip, one of Matt Bellamy's favourite composers is Chopin. Muse's most overt reference to Chopin's work is in the outro to their track United States of Eurasia. This outro, which Muse dubs Collateral Damage, is a direct adaption of Chopin's famous Nocturne in E-flat major. Apart from an added trill at the very beginning, and some subtle rhythmic changes, Muse's Collateral Damage begins as an unaltered rendition of Nocturne in E-flat major. However, Muse have shortened the piece, and also added strings and backing vocals to the arrangement. Another Muse song to draw from Chopin is their track Blockades. The chorus of Blockades directly lifts its melody from Chopin's Oceanitude, although Muse have changed the key and slightly altered the chords. Muse also borrowed from a different Chopin tune for their song Prelude, which appeared on the album The Second Law. Prelude lifts both the melody and the chords from Chopin's Etude Opus 10, number 3 in E major. However, whereas Chopin's Etude was written for solo piano, Muse have rearranged the piece for a strings ensemble. Another composer to inspire Muse is Camille Sansons. As Matt Bellamy explains in this clip, Muse's track I Belong to You was not only lyrically inspired by Sansons' opera Samson and Delilah, but Muse also decided to include a direct lifting of Delilah's aria in the middle of their track. Uh, well, the music and the text for this section is from an opera from Camille Sansons. Uh, one, one of the best arias ever, you know. Uh, inside it, really, really great aria, and it, yeah, but it's in the French language, and I, I'm, I'm terrible with French. But I really love this piece of music because the whole song was kind of influenced by this, this, uh, this uh, opera, really. And then I realised I had to try and sing it in French. The original idea was I was going to try and translate it into English, but it didn't. It sounded really bad, so I thought I'd just try and do it in French. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a uh, ripon d'amour, or something. Muse's version of Delilah's aria is much the same as the original, albeit one semitone higher in key and with some fairly questionable French pronunciation. Later on in the arrangement though, Muse have put their own spin on the piece. Whereas the original aria remains fairly reserved throughout, in Muse's version, they ramp up the dynamics and drama of the piece by substituting the gentle string accompaniment for electric guitars and drums. But perhaps the composer to have the biggest influence on Muse is Rachmaninoff. Rachmaninoff's lush string arrangements and sweeping piano arpeggios can be heard across dozens of Muse songs. For example, Muse's track Space Dementia draws a lot of influence from Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto. Space Dementia opens with a sweeping piano arpeggio of a minor add 9 chord, much like in Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto.
On top of this, the vocal melody from Space Dementia's chorus is lifted from a later part of Rachmaninoff's piano concerto, although Muse have changed the chords that accompany this melody. The piano break from Muse's Butterflies and Hurricanes also feels very Rachmaninoff-inspired. It almost sounds like a sped-up version of Rachmaninoff's Prelude in G minor, using a similar arpeggio figure with similar sounding chords. Now, due to Muse's obvious admiration for classical music, many people assume that Muse are classically trained musicians, but this isn't actually the case. And as we can see from this interview clip, despite Matt Benamy's impressive abilities at the piano, he isn't actually a very proficient sight reader either. Are any of you classically trained, music-wise? No. Sounds it on the album. Really? I mean, the piano, the piano yeah, yeah. stuff especially. I, I, sort, I, sort of listen, I sort of listen to, I listen to a lot. Of I piano stuff like that, and I sort of try and play it, but I can never read music, so um, I was, um, I could I always like listen to a piece of music and then try and remember it and play it afterwards, but it'd always be like a botch version, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Another Russian composer that has inspired Muse is Tchaikovsky. Muse's track Hoodoo features a very similar dramatic piano figure as Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto Number no. One. The only difference is that Muse have swapped the D flat major chord for a C minor chord and have also subtly adjusted some of the chord voicings. <laughs> Muse's track Interlude from their album Absolution seems to be inspired by Samuel Barber's famous adagio for strings. Muse's melody is like a more concise version of the Barber melody and is accompanied by very similar chords. I've discussed before how Muse's plug-in Baby seems to be inspired by Bach's famous Toccata and Fugue in D minor. But another Muse song that is seemingly inspired by Toccata is The Handler. Just like Bach's Toccata, the guitar solo from The Handler features a climb up the harmonic minor scale, which is regularly intersected by a pedal tone, in this case the root note. Likewise, the riff from Muse's In Your World is also very similar to Toccata. In Your World has the same melodic contour as Toccata, and also regularly intersects the fifth degree of the scale in the exact same fashion as Toccata. As mentioned in another recent video of mine, Muse's 10 minute epic The Globalist features a section that effectively sets lyrics to Elgar's famous Nimrod theme. Muse's choice to use Elgar's famous Nimrod theme in this piece of music is particularly poignant. The Globalist, which Matt Bellamy says was originally going to be called The British Empire, is a song about the dark side of empire and colonialism, so it adds a certain dark irony to the song that in the middle of this piece of music we have Elgar's Nimrod theme, a piece of music which is usually considered a highly patriotic British anthem. With all of the Muse songs that we've looked at so far, I would consider them to be classical inspired rock music. However, there is one Muse song, or should I say one Muse piece, which is perhaps better described as rock inspired classical music. The tail end of Muse's 2009 album The Resistance features the track Exogenesis, a 13 minute long miniature symphony in three parts. 
Bellamy has said that Exogenesis draws influence from Rachmaninoff, Richard Strauss, Chopin and Pink Floyd. And sure enough, even in a relatively short work, we can find moments that are reminiscent of all of these influences. The sweeping romantic strings of Rachmaninoff, the drama of Strauss, the chromatic piano work of Chopin, and of course, the driving epic rock of Pink Floyd. The last example we'll look at today is, in my opinion, one of the most interesting. Muse's track Drones is an a cappella piece in the style of Giovanni Pierluigi da Pellestrina. Drones is based melodically on Palestrina's Misa Papa Marsili. Drones also concludes with a stylistically typical Amen plagal cadence. What I love about this song is that Muse have taken a very modern lyrical topic, drone based warfare and paired it with a very historical style of music, a style of music which was usually reserved for songs about God. So you get this very eerie juxtaposition where this dark subject matter is contrasted by this very bright music. If you can think of any other songs inspired by classical music, by Muse or any other artists, then do leave them down below in the comments and I'll try and put them in a future video. And as always, the biggest thanks goes to everyone who supports me on Patreon, including the names you can see on screen right now, and Abigail Allen, Andre Sainz Diaja, Andrew, Andrew Brown, Austin Barrett, Austin Russell, Bob McKinstry, Brittany Parker, Cameron Olivella, Colin Aiken, Chris Cabell, Christopher Ryan, David Rivers, Donald Howard, Dr. Darren Wicks, Elena Skorchenko, Esben Hansen, Eugene Leroy, FD Hodor, Guillermo Latona, Hamish Brocklebank, Hugo Miller, James Ko, J.A. Kokensparger, John Dye, Joan Soderstrom, Justin Vigger, Lavender Mint Rose, Mark Height, Mark Ziegenhagen, Max O'Keefe, Melody Composer Squared, Michael Vivian, Nancy Gillard, Nathan Lawrence, Nathaniel Park, Paul Miller, Paul Pazel, Peter Dumpty, Piotr Schmielowski, Roger Clay, Sam Lynn, Scott Fenley, Sean Kennedy, Steve Daly, Stephen Lazaro, Tim Beaker, Trisha Adams, Tim Payne, Toot, Victor Levy, Vidad Flowers, Vladimir Kodakov, and Volti.